company's gamble paid off and it went on to become an aviation giant. The company was Boeing. In 1952, the company developed a prototype transport plane. The prototype was to become one of the greatest planes of the century, the Boeing 707. William E. Boeing was the company founder and owner. As the company grew, he remained as the president and chairman of the board from 1916 to 1934. Under his guidance, a garage airplane manufacturing business went on to become a conglomerate of air and space related industries. Boeing sold his interest in the Boeing airplane company. Boeing died in 1956. Although Boeing was well ahead technology wise, their competitors were gaining ground on the famous 707 with planes like the DC-8 and Convair 880. Boeing decided to raise the stakes and again took a massive risk with the expenditure of $100 million to build even better aircraft. To increase its market share, Boeing decided that customer service was an important issue. Boeing customised the 707 for different clients. They made special long-range models for Qantas Airways of Australia and they installed larger engines for Braniff's high-altitude South American routes. The cost of customising was high and every version of the 707 was a financial risk. Again, for Boeing, the risks paid dividends as sales of the 707 outstripped the DC-8. The 707 ended commercial service in 1958 when Pan Am flew it from New York to Paris in 8 hours and 41 minutes, twice as fast as any propeller plane of its day. The 707 passed a remarkable test. An underwater tank held an entire fuselage and pressure was exerted on the plane, which was calculated to be the equivalent of 40 years of flying, or 50,000 flight cycles. the plane was intentionally damaged in certain areas to see how long such damage could sustain long-term flight. Amongst the final tests of the 707 was the placing of barrels of water in the plane to simulate the weight of 180 passengers or 45,000 pounds of payload. Another nine tonnes was added just to see if the plane could sustain such an overload. The total weight of the plane was 360,000 pounds. The ground engineers recorded all the vital statistics of the tests, including the performance of individual components and flight characteristics. Over 35 days of flight tests, the pilots flew the plane from very low levels to very high altitudes at speeds ranging from near stall to over 700 miles per hour. The plane and test results were handed to the FAA for their testing and certification. The FAA certified the plane. The biggest compliment to Boeing regarding both the safety of the plane and its capabilities occurred in December 1959 when an Air Force C-17A landed in Rome. The plane had President Eisenhower on board and he was on a mission called Monsoon. The President was going to visit 11 countries in 19 days. Such a journey on the best plane previous to the 707 would have taken at least a month. This was a clear sign to the world that the jet age was here. In India, Eisenhower visited the Taj Mahal with President Nauru. When he arrived in Athens via Tehran, he had covered the entire rule of Alexander the Great in just one day's travel. He went on through France, Spain and Morocco before returning to the United States. The trip was an absolute success. Huge crowds met him wherever he went and they also saw the future of flight in the Boeing 707. Today, with planes derived from the 707's remarkable achievements, many people have the opportunity to follow in President Eisenhower's footsteps and to travel to places that once seemed so far away. Boeing didn't stop there. They took another gamble, and like before, if it failed, the company would be lost. On July 25, 1966, 
Boeing took the first physical step of building the world's largest commercial aircraft. But before the construction of the plane started, they had to build the world's largest factory. More than 2,800 men were employed to construct the factory that had a capacity to build several jumbos at a time. Prior to starting the building, much research and development had to be done to confirm exactly what Boeing wanted to create. Thousands of hours were spent on wind tunnel tests and on paper designs to reduce drag as much as possible. Drag determines the plane's fuel usage and this equates to money. For the 747 to be a success, it had to be economical to operate. A full-scale mock-up of the 747 was built to test every part and component of the plane. Basically, that first 747 was nothing more than an engineering tool. Components were arriving from contract companies both nationally and internationally. When full production began, all these 4.5 million parts had to arrive on time every time. The logistics were as huge as the plane itself. This is the first jumbo coming together. This is the theory being tested in practice and a plane becoming a reality. The tolerance of the engineering process had never before been so stringent in aircraft manufacture. Many substantial obstacles had to be overcome to reach this point and the tension was heavy as this was the make or break point of the project. It was not only the large parts of the jigsaw that had to fit, it was the millions of small pieces that also had to fit and operate perfectly. Over 75,000 engineering drawings were used and each assembly instruction had to be followed to the letter. To get the plane together for the big presentation day was a colossal job. The first plane was rolled out on September 30, 1968. Development costs at that time were said to exceed one billion. But that didn't include the cost of the world's largest factory. The first two operational planes were created just to be destroyed in one of the world's most expensive destructive testing exercises. This is a wing flying for the equivalent of 30 years. This is a wing braking after being pushed upwards by 29 feet. One test saw the tail of the plane dragged along the runway until the plane actually reached its minimum unstuck speed. Undoubtedly, the tail wouldn't hit the ground in commercial use. The rejected takeoff test is another interesting experience for the test pilot. The brakes are locked up and the plane is given full throttle down the runway. First the tyres blow, then the undercarriage gives way, finally the fire starts. Anti-lock brakes, now common on cars, have been used on the jumbo from the very beginning. Another test is to land the plane with a number of wheels locked up. This tested the tyres and what would happen in the event of tyre failure. It also demonstrated what would happen if a braking malfunction occurred. It wasn't all smooth flying for Boeing. There were some problems. The plane's huge size was one. The first jumbo was overweight and would not be of operational value. Regardless of the problems, Boeing worked through them with the same dedication that they had when building the plane. What Boeing had built was an aviation milestone and will probably go down in history as the greatest commercial aircraft of the last century.